This is the Metro X, a hybrid laser line and structured light 3D scanner from RevoPoint. It was successfully launched on Kickstarter last month, and pre-orders are live on the RevoPoint website for $999 US dollars. For a limited time, you can grab one for 7% off using the coupon code linked in the description. The advanced edition is $200 more and comes with a box of marker blocks. This kit includes a ton of handy marker blocks that you can add to your scanning scene to enhance precision. 3D scanning can be pretty intimidating, but I found the setup and use of this scanner specifically was really easy. So today I'll take you through the process of scanning a few objects. First we have to calibrate the scanner using the supplied calibration plate. And this kind of reminded me of a Nintendo Wii minigame. Now that everything's calibrated, we can start scanning. First up is this frog sponge holder. I found this at the thrift store for a few bucks, and I remember seeing these all the time in the late 90s. This is a great test for the scanner as it's shiny and a darker color. Two things that other scanners can struggle with. Supplied with the scanner is this tilting and rotating turntable. This gets connected to the RevoScan software via Bluetooth for automated hands-free scanning. There's a handful of scanning modes on the Metro X, but for this I use the full field scanning mode in conjunction with the auto turntable. And here we can see the frog model slowly start to take shape. 3D scans start as a point cloud, which looks like this. And just to put the Metro X's power into perspective, it's capable of scanning 7 million of these points per second in full field mode. The next stage for our model is to turn it into a mesh, which is basically drawing a line between each one of our points and creating polygons. The RevoScan software has a handful of options for cleaning up, smoothing, and even deleting unwanted keyframes from your scan. One of the coolest features though is this merge tool. In this menu you can select two scans of the same object and specify key features to align the model before merging them. This means I was able to flip the frog over and capture the underside to make sure I wasn't missing any big areas of scan data. Once it's all cleaned up and merged, I exported it as an STL. From there, I dropped it into Mesh Mixer, which is a super useful piece of software for 3D printing. In here, I used the offset tool to create an inner wall, sculpted some juicy frog lips, flattened the bottom, and of course, added a little more definition to this guy's little frog hands. Now we can print this thing. I think it's really cool to take this classic ceramic frog and usher it into the 21st century using 3D printing. And when the original breaks, I'll be able to print replacements indefinitely. Super cool. The next project I have is this old drill press that you attach a corded drill to. I think I paid five bucks for this and it'll be perfect for my tiny workshop. But I want a way to attach a bunch of various tools to this and most importantly this old soldering iron for putting threaded inserts into my 3D prints. After disassembling the drill press, I put a bunch of these scanning markers on the mounting plate. These help with the scanning process, giving the software some easily distinguishable reference points that help with tracking.
After getting a few scans using both the blue laser and full field scanning modes, I merged them all together and exported a mesh. I pulled this into Fusion and here's the resulting scan rendered with an aluminum finish. I did have to reduce the mesh so my computer didn't light on fire, but it's got just enough polygons for me to make a nice fitting mounting plate. And here's the result, printed in PETG with an attachment for this soldering iron. Perfect threaded inserts every time. I'll eventually scan a drill and flex shaft motor for this, but I'll save that for another day. Next, I'm going to try and scan the cup holder in my truck so I can eventually redesign it. I just need to cover it in these marker dots and we can use the crossed blue laser mode to scan it. Once we have all of our data, we can align our different scans and combine them together. Now we can trim some of the excess unwanted data and apply a few rounds of the smoothing filter. After merging the scans of both sides, I did some cleanup and here's the resulting model. Finally, I wanted to scan something organic, so I went on a short walk and found an absolute monster mushroom that I think will be perfect for scanning. I printed this mushroom holder and attached a few marker dots just to help with tracking. Using the full field scanning mode and the turntable, I was able to capture a bunch of detail, including the gills on the underside of this mushroom. Again, I cleaned the model up a bit in Mesh Mixer, sliced the mushroom in half, and added some holes for magnets. And here's the resulting 3D print. A perfect fridge magnet. I think this turned out awesome and knowing it's a replica of a mushroom that grew right near my house is super cool. That's all for today. Special thanks to RevoPoint for sending the new Metro X for me to take a look at. You can visit the link in the description to learn more about this scanner. You can also enter to win one of these scanners in the Revo Point Scan the Holidays competition. As always, thanks for watching and happy scanning.